We are an architecture practice. We cut our teeth on uh, really fabulous, colourful, engaging, amazing uh, family homes. We were really keen to sort of stretch, uh, flex some different muscles and um, get into the civic work that we were doing before we started our practice. Um, we ran a design studio through Monash um, down on Princess Priya to put a school, uh, a new high school in Princess Priya, and we were working a lot in the area. Right. Uh, there was a big exhibition uh, at the Port Melbourne Primary School where we presented 16 speculative projects and we thought it was a really amazing opportunity to actually present the pool as well. Uh, we'd been um, commissioned by some local residents to uh, do some images, um, do some visualisations. We worked together with um, a friend of ours called Andre Benice to generate um, some beautiful images uh, to actually, I guess, garner support, get excited um, about the potential of doing this. About 20 years ago, there was a feasibility study that was done um, in, in roughly the same area. The, uh, area we're talking about is on the beach. It's a seaside pool for Port Melbourne, uh, sitting next to the Port Melbourne Yacht Club. So the idea was that potentially um, you would rejuvenate uh, some of the facilities there. You would upgrade them. You, you know, the the beach itself in that particular area isn't. It's not overly used. Um, it sort of it sort of is, but it's not. Um, it's not as beautiful as it could be, maybe. And so we decided we would. Um, put a pool there we we did some really quick images and then the feedback that we got at this trivia night that we exhibited at was 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 really really incredible and so we sort of thought well why don't we just take it uh one step further and do a crowdfunding so brilliant and so your crowdfunding i, I guess this is what we call stage one crowdfunding <laughs> yeah. isn't it and you're yeah. trying to raise at this stage fifteen thousand dollars and what is that uh, stage one funding for exactly yeah um so we, I guess we felt that we maybe needed a mandate from the people. Um, you know, we, we'd gotten a lot of, um, yeah, anecdotes of how amazing that would be. And so, um, but, but really all we'd done is these few images. Um, we'd had a, some success previously. Uh, we raised, um, uh, we managed to secure state government funding for, for a uh, footy club out in Narry Warren. And so that's about to start construction, which is really really great but basically that was off the back of doing um, a really quick FISO and um, you know generating images that allow people to buy into the idea right um, and so we sort of thought well we'll do the same thing here but really because it's such an environmentally sensitive sort of proposal we um, you know we need to sort of get advice get excited um, part of the FISO really for that 15 grand I guess is to have community workshops and some information sessions um, and so really that's about um, allowing people to almost have a mechanism for taking control of a particular of their community. I think there was a lot of anger over what happened at Fisherman's Bend. Um, you know, it sort of felt like, you know, the, the place was sort of carved up and sold off and there wasn't really that, you know, planning in that area. There wasn't the social and public infrastructure, parks, schools um, weren't really um, accounted for. And I think that people felt there was a, a lack of control there. And so I guess we sort of thought it would be really popular to allow people to have that voice and a say um, about their community. Right. And so I guess you, you tell us about this image that we're looking at now, because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know this area very well. I feel like I'm down there. I feel, I feel I can hear the ocean. I can <laughs> yeah. feel the sea breeze almost. Uh, do you want to just tell us a little bit about that image? So the first image is really important because it really sets up the context for the space. You've got the spirit of Tasmania, um, obviously Princess Pia would be behind that. Um, and it, I guess it's sort of this dreamy image that sort of starts to talk about a pool by the beach. You know, um, it, it was never really about sort of designing the actual thing. It was more about, you know, how do we communicate the fact that you could have kids and families and, um, you know, in the crowdfunding campaign, we talk a lot about um, how, you know, sort of Australian or quintessential it is to be by the beach and, you know, the, 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 um, arch the Biennale, um, the architecture Biennale, the exhibition was this beautiful pool and it, you know, it, it sort of felt like there was this appetite. Uh, you know, today we had a meeting with Yarra Pools um, who were trying to put a, a pool on the Yarra and, you know, they're doing some amazing work there and it kind of was this idea, well, um, that was 
in the Yarra, what if it's by the beach and start to sort of conjure up Bondi sort of iceberg-esque uh, sort of deal and, um, you know, getting these beautiful palm trees in to kind of make it feel a bit Miami maybe <laughs> or a bit sort of glitzy or something and then it's got, um, you know, you can start to see on the right of the image that the building would sort of open up um, to, the, to the sea, allow for families and, I don't know, cocktails and or maybe not cocktails by the beach, but maybe they're a bit further back. I don't know. Like that's the so point. It's of the almost to me. It looks like a little bit of what I would call sort of Port Melbourne chic in a yeah, way, isn't it? It's yeah. kind of uh, sort of like beach chic. And then I guess the whole vision of it being so close to the water, and and I guess there's the is that a spa pool off to the other side there, <laughs> yeah, why not? for example. Why not? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it really looks very warm and friendly. And so I know that you've had so far a tremendous amount of support. I you certainly picked it up on an article I read uh, on the web. Yeah. And uh, and then when we began to have a look at the amount of support you've got, you must be surprised. Yeah, it's it's been incredible. You know, we uh, we sort of launched it. Um, not really. Maybe I didn't sort of plan as much as I should have. We so the plan was to get it online and then to sort of see what happened then. <laughs> sure. and, um, you know, it was in the age and it sort of blew up from there. We've got, um, it feels like every hour we were getting phone calls from people just uh, in support and, um, you know, you know, some really very impressive people who were like, hey, what if, you know, what if this was a lagoon? I'm like, sure, you know, if, I guess that's the point of the FISO, that actually if we got the feedback that it wanted to be a tennis court, then maybe we'd, you know, I don't know, imagine that it would be a tennis court or it could be something else. And I guess that that, that was... Um, a really important part, but I guess the feedback was that, that people would really like a pool here. Um, but yeah, we I went on seven seven four, and that was, you know, we got we got a lot of feedback from that, which was really cool. So yeah, it's been really surprising and um, and fabulous. Yeah, and I guess the, the other beautiful thing is for many people, you know, you can you can join the crowdfunding campaign for what, is it little as twenty dollars or yes. something? You can make a donation, and, and lots yeah. of people have come on board with that. You've also had some really exciting corporate sponsor. There's quite a few corporates humming around now, yes. and uh, I guess did you anticipate that? Uh, well, uh, I presented it on Monday night to at a um, event called Process um, that's run by sort of um, emerging architects, I guess. That right. was sponsored yeah. by Dulux. It just happened to be um, last year I won an emerging architect prize, right. uh, the Dulux Study Tour, and yep. so sure. um, you know we we really spoke about, or I spoke about it at that at that talk, how we visited Studio Octopi in London, and so they were the pioneers of. Um, crowdfunding pool projects in right. the UK and yeah. so I feel like there was this really amazing tie-in okay. and then um, yeah but Austral have come on board a lot of people have come on board so fantastic do you want to just expl uh, give us some detail on the second image that we are looking at now because I think it's a very uh, I mean it's a very green looking image do you want <laughs> yes. to tell me what's happening there yeah so this the second image is an aerial view a bird's eye view it's um, starting to communicate the connectivity of Port Melbourne and how uh, the, the yacht club and this proposal is really connected to uh, the shops and the cafes. There's, you know, a lot of restaurants are starting to come on board and say, you know, hey, this would really um, benefit our business, and so we've been getting a lot of support um, from, from them. Um, it's, I guess, it sort of talks about um, the proximity to the water. It was really important to. This uh, to the, the locals, John Crest was um, a key local who's really keen on keeping their car park. And so, um, you know, I guess we live in a Google age. We were wanting to create something kind of iconic from right. Google as well. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, we decided it could be really great to put a green roof over the top of the car park. And so, um, you know, giving, you know, maybe some elevation. Uh, we've had different different um, people come on board and say, hey, maybe it could be, um, you know, it could be a cafe up there. But I guess like the original intention was that it could um, be a green space. So you could use it in spring and autumn um, without a towel. The idea that you could sort of go hang out at the beach, um, yeah, impromptu was really attractive. Um, one of our main precedents was Cottesloe Beach where it's got these green grassy tiered Oh, yes, spaces yeah, by the sure, beach and yeah. you know I sort of fell in love with that and thought hey well, how can we create that here yeah. um, one of the 774 feedback was you know no matter how much money you spend you can never turn it into Cutslow Beach I went, yes good point good point but you know um, I mean the thing is that uh, 
you could make this area extremely beautiful and in its own right. And um, I think, you know, I personally love all of that sort of infrastructure that put, that's, that makes, um, you know, the iconic image of Port Melbourne. And you could imagine that, um, you know, as the people arrive from the spirit of Tasmania, that voyage, um, it could be it could be an extremely iconic sort of gateway um, gateway. It looks like a beer garden to me. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, slash beer garden. <laughs> but I guess there's plenty of beer gardens across the road, really, when you think about it in a sense, although there's not many gardens, there's plenty of beer. So it's certainly good to see some <laughs> garden there yeah. in that uh, in that space. Okay, brilliant. And do you want to just tell us about the third image? Because I, I know that, that um, I guess, uh, it's a really good clear, clean vision of um, what it can look like, what it can feel like. And uh, I know that uh, certainly a lot of people were very attracted to that image in terms of its whole, it looked like it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, I guess uh, from, from the roadside, it would be this beautiful undercroft where you would have protection from the rain and the sun. Um, but then to the front side, I guess it's the party. Um, you know, beach, beach sort of party 